And good evening from here in London tonight, outside Buckingham Palace, an extraordinary time in the history of the British monarchy. The passing of the crown from Queen Elizabeth II to her son, now King Charles III. This has been a day mixed with sorrow and celebration as the future of the monarchy begins to unfold before Britain and before the world. Bells across the UK tolling 96 times today, one chime for each year of the Queen's life. A booming 96-gun salute from the Tower of London, echoing throughout the UK as millions mourn her passing. There was a remarkable scene when King Charles and Queen Consort Camilla arrived here outside Buckingham Palace. King Charles greeting the crowds of hundreds, shaking hands as they offered their condolences. And we witnessed the spontaneous moment when the crowd singing God Save the Queen suddenly switched the lyrics to God Save the King. Shortly after, Charles and Camilla walked into the palace for the first time as King and Queen Consort. King Charles then delivering his first address to the I public, to thanking today, his mother for her devoted service and vowing sorry. to continue her tradition. In his first official act, King Charles holding an audience with new Prime Minister Liz Truss, appointed just three days ago by the Queen in person. The Prime Minister also presiding over a moment of silence in Parliament. Flags now flying at half-staff in honor of Queen Elizabeth, the country now in a 10-day period of mourning. I'm joined tonight by my 2020 co-anchor, Amy Robach. She's live in Scotland, along with Deborah Roberts and James Longman right here in London. We're also joined by Robert Jobson, Royal Contributor Victoria Murphy, and former Communications and Press Secretary to the Queen, Ilsa Anderson. Over the next two hours here, we will celebrate Queen Elizabeth in her own words at key moments in history, her promise at just 21 years old, her strength, her steady hand, her role as a mother, a grandmother, and yes, her fashion, what she said even about that the images of the Queen few of us have seen. And we look forward tonight, King Charles, Queen Consort Camilla, and the changing roles already tonight for William and Kate and the next generation of royals. What will this look like? But first here, it has been an unprecedented 48 hours of history as Britain and the world pay tribute to the Queen and welcome a new king and the unveiling of a new monarchy. Tonight, the world watching King Charles begin his reign, a role he's been preparing for his entire life the heir to the throne since he was just three years old, the longest serving heir to the British throne in history. His journey now begins. This morning, Charles leaving Scotland as the new king, traveling to London, arriving at Buckingham Palace. He was about to address the Commonwealth and people all over the world for the first time as king. But before he would deliver that speech, a moment taken straight from the playbook of his mother. Outside Buckingham Palace, King Charles and his direct and personal connection with the people, going out to greet them as they mourn the loss of their beloved queen. The people who have gathered here from so many backgrounds, and they made it clear today, they're here not only to mourn the queen, but to support their new king. Along the way, voices from the crowd singing God Save the Queen, the national anthem to honor their queen. But then came the moment as he walked down that line, suddenly one voice turning into many, people beginning to sing, God Save the King. God save our gracious King, lovely King, wonderful King, God save the King. Then from inside the blue drawing room in Buckingham Palace, a photo of the Queen right beside him, his first message as King. And he began with the Queen, his beloved mother. We owe her the most heartfelt debt any family could owe to their mother for her love, affection, guidance, understanding and example. He signaled a royal family that will embrace all backgrounds, all faiths. In the course of the last 70 years, we have seen our society become one of many cultures and many faiths. The institutions of the state have changed in turn. But through all changes and challenges, our nation and the wider family of realms of whose talents, traditions and achievements I am so inexpressibly proud have prospered and flourished. He talked about the woman who will be by his side, Camilla, now the queen consort. I count on the loving help of my darling wife, Camilla. In recognition of her own loyal 
public service since our marriage 17 years ago. She becomes my queen consort. The king revealing that Prince William will now be the Prince of Wales and Duchess Kate will be the Princess of Wales, a title not used since Princess Diana. Our new Prince and Princess of Wales will, I know, continue to inspire and lead our national conversations, helping to bring the marginal to the centre ground where vital help can be given. He spoke of Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan. I want also to express my love for Harry and Meghan as they continue to build their lives overseas. And tonight, a rare look inside the palace. The King's first audience with the new Prime Minister, Liz Truss, and their deeply personal exchange. Their first time meeting since the Queen's death. It's a moment I've been dreading, mm. as, as I know a lot of people have, but mm. I'm try and keep everything going. And overnight, the tributes. Here in London, the cabs lining up to say goodbye. Her image displayed on the Sydney Opera House. In Paris, the Eiffel Tower going dark. In New York City, the Empire State Building lit in purple and silver. Sir Paul McCartney remembering, quote, her great sense of humor combined with great dignity. God bless you. You will be missed. I'm glad she's at peace. I'm glad she's at rest. And she deserves it. She's worked bloody hard. And Sir Elton John at his concert. She will be missed, but her spirit leave, lives on. And we celebrate her life tonight with music, okay? And tonight, the crowds here in London gathering to mourn, to honor, to celebrate the queen and to welcome their new king. You can see the crowds uh, gathering outside Buckingham Palace as they have really all day here. And if you look above the palace, the royal standard uh, is flying. They have not only a new king, uh, but he's here at Buckingham Palace, which is what that flag signifies. We met so many who came from all over, bringing flowers for their queen. This mother and daughter, Mandy and Molly Bird, traveling more than an hour from outside London. What did she mean to you and to the British people? She was a really good example of British people, I think, and our history. The little boy, Rafi, and his flowers beside his big sister. What did she teach the world? Well, she taught the world to be a bit more like caring for other people. American Hannah Nowicki from Lansing, Michigan. You're from Michigan. Why did you come to honor the Queen? It just felt like the right thing to do and to be in an atmosphere where everybody is feeling the same. Khadija Yunus and her one-year-old daughter. She told me she will tell her daughter about the Queen one day. What did the Queen mean to you? She was like an inspiration because she was a female. So she represented all as females and she was just like a loving person. There was Amika and her young son. She wasn't embroiled in a lot of political, you know, in, in now that everyone's trying to be politically correct, she managed to stay neutral. And Archie Andrews from London on the Queen's legacy. What do you think her lasting legacy is? I think she lived the most extraordinary life and that's how people will remember her and unforgettable. Yeah. And her service? Yeah, um, outstanding. And at the end of his first address as the new king, Charles turning back to the queen, offering a very simple but profound message to his mother. To my darling mama, as you begin your last great journey to join my dear late papa, I want simply to say this, thank you. Thank you for your love and devotion to our family and to the family of nations you have served so diligently all these years. May flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. We were all moved today by those words for his mother. I want to bring in James Longman and Deborah Roberts, both here in London with me tonight. And James, you and I were talking, you live here in London. So many people for so long have questioned whether then Prince Charles would be able to step into this role, particularly after 70 years of Queen Elizabeth. But we saw something in that crowd today when he was here. We did, we saw a sparkle in his eye. Um, we saw the reactions and this is literally the job 
he was born to do. Um, but let's be real about this. So many people watching back in the United States, at home, all around the world, when they think of Charles, they remember Diana. And he has done so much work to try to change that image, to try to shape, reshape his reputation into the kind of grandfatherly sage-like figure we saw today. A sort of quiet work, if you will. And Deborah, you and I have traveled here to London to cover the royals many times mm -hmm. together. And one of the tests as of late was after the passing of Prince Philip, his father. And that steadying presence that then Prince Charles had, uh, leading the family through that sorrow, and now he leads the Commonwealth after the death of Queen Elizabeth. And I think James is right. You do see a sparkle. I mean, first of all, this is a man who's in mourning, so you know that, and you can see that in his face. But yet you saw a man who is at ease. He was sort of settling into, it seemed, this role of king as he walked about in that crowd. And his mother, of course, started the whole walkabouts many years ago. He seemed to be really at ease. A woman even planted a kiss on him and he seemed he to it. enjoy it. Yes, yeah. exactly. So I think that that's not a Charles that you've seen over the years. And to see him sort of starting to ease up, it might be a signal of things to come and how he plans to rule. Yeah, borrowing straight from his mother's playbook in, yes. in that respect. And James, one more question to you before we continue here tonight. And, and and that involves just what we saw here at Buckingham Palace today. I loved uh, all the people we had a chance to talk to, the sort of tapestry of faces and backgrounds that came not only to celebrate the Queen, but to say to the new King, we support you. Absolutely. Ages, different races, backgrounds from different social classes. The monarchy has that capacity to cross all those boundaries. And you know, this is modern Britain. It's completely different to the country that the Queen inherited. Charles is really well placed to understand that. The work he's been doing with young people throughout his time as the Prince of Wales, he really understands social issues in this country. I don't think people, maybe at home in the United States, realize that. But, you know, this is a very different multicultural Britain. And I think Charles is ready. A new chapter begins. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.